Assalamu alaikum, y'all. May peace be upon you and your homies, your ancestors, your other spirits, your family who are alive. When I say everybody, I mean everybody. My name is Taylor Amari Little. If you're not using that full name, then you just call me Tay. I use she, her, and he, him pronouns. I'm a conjure woman based in southeastern Michigan for the most part, often bouncing between Ypsilanti, Detroit, and Ann Arbor, Michigan for school, work, family, and also community life. And when I'm not here, I am definitely elsewhere. I am an energy healing service provider, energy mother, diviner, and I work with dead people for a living and other spirits and creatures. I'm not going to leave them out too, I guess, you know. I am a black queer Muslim femme, among all other things, which I'm not mentioning just because, but because that is what often informs my politics and my frameworks, the religious and spiritual systems that I abide by, and really just my everything. This is Tay in the Water podcast. No, not because I'm in the water while I'm recording, but I mean water as in movement, as in the spiritual realm, as in balance, restoration, feelings, dreams, inner worlds, trying to keep a cool head in this ugly ass world and incorporating, exploring all of these different things as life practice. That is Tay in the Water. Now welcome, welcome to my podcast y'all and now we can go. Bismillah or rahman or rahim We officially beginning the show in the name of the divine, the most high, however we defining God for ourselves. Before we officially begin, I do want to give a trigger warning for this episode for mentioning Black Death. Not any explicit details of any particular situations, but it is being spoken about for a few minutes in a more, in a more general way. But besides that, I hope y'all week has been going smoothly. For me, this week has been fine. Um, which means that it's pretty much been the same, meaning always going somewhere, always doing some work. Like always, spirits taking me and my friends on wild ass adventures and shit that's really just preparing us for new things. Um, But also resting and cooking and other things. One interesting thing about this past week is I had jury duty for the first time ever. Um, I had to get up at like 6.30 in the morning and drive to the city with my friend. And over here, when we say in the city, we're talking about Detroit. Just letting you know, it only means Detroit. Um, But before that, uh, my ancestors, they were helping me get dressed, as they do. And they had me wear this all-white outfit, which I don't normally wear unless I just did a spiritual bath or I'm doing some other kind of spiritual work that requires it. Um, But they had me in this all-white, including my head being covered in it. And like red lipstick and this long jacket with like this plaid pattern that's red and black, which are like really hard protection colors. And I hadn't worn that jacket in at least a year, so I was a little surprised when I had grabbed it. I look cute nonetheless. But as I was getting dressed, my ancestors had told me, they said, you should wear this since you're going to a place where black people often die. And then when they said where black people often die, I also heard them say at the very same time um, where black people are sentenced to die. And intuitively, I also knew that they weren't just referring to the physical deaths of black people, but also the social and, and civic deaths of black people who get trapped within the system, which is something that we talk a lot about in the field of criminology. But of course, folks in other fields may discuss a lot too. Like for example, who are involved in black studies, more specifically studies of black fugitivity. Civic deaths referring to how people get labeled as criminal by the state. Like when that happens, their civic rights are stripped, essentially becoming a non-member of society. Despite being told that, you know, if they just work hard enough, they'll be able to reintegrate with no issue right? Civic deaths include things like getting barred from student loans if you want to go to college or pursue higher education after your sentence, for people with certain felonies being limited or even banned from able being able to get food stamps, even if you got kids, not having the right to vote, and so forth. And then social deaths generally referring to also experiencing a sort of societal or social rejection and then being labeled as a non-member of society. But 
can also extend to being seen as more of a non-member of humanity. For example, which black people already experience in this world. And you know, many of us don't have to actually directly interact with the prison system or criminal justice system to experience this type of isolation because arguably our social deaths began when black people started getting kidnapped and enslaved. Um, with civic deaths and social deaths, they not only affect only people who are in prisons, but they affect people who are victimized by all aspects of the criminal justice system. So this definitely includes community corrections, which can most often include people on probation. So like the hardcore monitoring and supervision that happens that supposedly exists to make sure people ain't committing crimes, um, but also people on parole. Community corrections can also include people on parole. So like the sentence formerly incarcerated people serve to prove that they can follow a certain set of conditions. And if they break one, one of those rules, one of those conditions or a few, even if it's things like being late to a mandatory meeting with their parole officer because of say like lack of transportation or not being able to get a legal job, those will become parole violations and they can actually get sent right back to prison. So these things, civil death and social death, they tend to get referred to as collateral consequences, which are basically legal barriers post-conviction. They are results of the sentences, but not actually part of it in writing. They often get called unintended consequences, but we all know that shit is fake. We all know that shit is very well intended because why would a nation built on enslavement and genocide want people thrown in cages to be given any manifestations of freedom? So I definitely wanted to expand on my ancestor's comment of me needing to be dressed in ways that kept me protected and also not absorbing any of the energies from that institution or institutions like it because I definitely needed it as a reminder um, before walking in that day. And also I definitely wanted to expand on their comment um, for like what they meant when they said death. And I didn't even get into the spiritual death aspect of it. But yeah, it felt important to share. Besides that, the rest of that day was fine. Um, they eventually let my group leave early. Thank God that shit was great because we was all ready to go. To go. And I was also just around some like real weird shit. Like this weird guilt trippy imperialist propaganda ass nigga. That this, um, the, it was like this one judge, um, who was talking to us. He was just saying some really weird shit. Um, and, and like guilt tripping, like violent shit. It was really strange. Um, but now we are going to move in to the next piece. Okay. So we back and the next thing that I want to talk about is silence and safety. First of all, y'all need to know that I am an earth sign ass bitch. Specifically, I have heavy Virgo placements in my chart. That means that I love being in my head. I love analyzing. You know, we are under Mercury just like, you know, my siblings Gemini, my Gemini gang, okay? So, you know, collectively, like, we all about communication, but it just manifests in very different ways. And for me, like, that manifests as communicating data and patterns. Um, and then, like, for me, that also manifests as me being in my head a lot and really speaking with efficiency or trying to speak with efficiency. And so, like, you know, I'm constantly measuring the situations that I'm in, measuring like, should I be talking right now? What do I need to say? What's happening? What are all the potential ways that this person or these people might respond uh, respond with? And how can I be prepared for every single one of them? And I need to have it all lined up right now. You know, um, what is the calculated time of me speaking all these things? Like just asking all these questions. And there's so much mental activity that happens before I open my mouth or before I engage in something. And so like with that, like a lot of that thinking is internal. And then 
you know, also, you know, I grew up as mostly the only child, so I, I'm really good at being by myself and, like, finding something to do. So that also has me just, like, really in my head all the time. Like, I'm fine. I'm cool. I'm chilling. If I ain't got nobody around, you know, like, normally, um, you know, I'm fine. I just, I'm not really tempted to be sharing my thoughts, um, like, externally or, like, processing externally, like, to other people. Like, that's not something that I feel super dependent on. Um, additionally, like being a medium and doing the types of spiritual work that I do, I'm also just a person who stays interacting with spirits, especially internally. And so with that being said, like that is a lot, you know, like a lot of mental activity, but also for me, um, external silence, like me being quiet and being in my head or just sitting there, like that's a very beautiful thing as a whole. And you know, it's so rare for me to be in an environment in which I'm not constantly measuring my safety. And I write and talk about this often because I'm a black queer person and I'm also femme, you know, and safety, you can't really find it very often. But the spaces that I do end up feeling safe in are usually full of love and respect. They full of, um, you know, just people who care about me and who I care for very openly. There's no issues um, that, like, can't be worked through. They are sober spaces. They are uplifting of our spirits very intentionally, like our individual spirits, but also our spirit teams that we walk with. You know, these spaces are very affirming and also centering um, of you know, queer and trans people of color, and even more often only for black, queer, and trans people. And, you know, there are so many people who see me withdraw from certain spaces that are not that, um, or withdrawing from conversations and things like that, and they might mistake it for sadness, um, or even like irritation or anger, which is also oftentimes how people see black women in general and then also black femmes. Like when they see us, they automatically may see us as angry beings or um, people who don't want to be a part of something. And, you know, sometimes that'd be the case, shit, you know? But oftentimes when I am withdrawing, like I'm really just kind of retreating and going into the safest and most comfortable place that I can be in in that moment. And that is my head. I could be sad too, or maybe I'm not, but usually like that's the safest place for me to be in. And if I feel like I need to do that, then I need to do that. You know, when I respect, um, when my silence comes, like I respect it. I respect my need to withdraw and my need to hold myself for a little bit. And I don't be disturbing my silence because my silence be asking for peace. You know, my silence has to be honored. And so I'll be honoring that shit. <laughs> and it comes when it wants and I don't always find it necessary to change yeah other people constantly do and be picking at it and shit and you know I recognize that that's not always okay and that when my silence arrives like I be welcoming it um and I I also be wishing that other people would too sometimes but I also recognize my own need to affirm myself in this but with that being said I also just want to take the time to affirm any of y'all who stay in y'all's heads too, because it's not inherently bad. People stay asking other people, especially black femmes, like, oh, why are you quiet all of a sudden? You irritated? What you mad or something? You angry? What you doing? What you got going on? And even if them questions be like, do be coming from places of genuine wholehearted intentions, we got every right to be inside of ourselves, you know? We have every right to retreat. I love that. And I know that that's, um, it's probably a Cancer Moon ass thing to say as somebody who is low key a homebody and a little crab who gonna pinch you if you try to fuck that shit up. But no, like, it's like, if anything, just ask us what we need or if we don't know what we need, you know, ask if we need help identifying that. Like, help, I um, need help identifying what we need. You know, you ain't gotta automatically paint us as these pissed off people or even if we are pissed off demonize us and make us feel like we wrong for being that way so if you needed any inf uh, any affirmations for that then you know here you go it is it's okay um and then also another thing is that not everyone is deserving of your speech not everybody is deserving of your speech they don't deserve to hear you talk all the time let's talk about it like for me personally 
If I don't feel like I have a solid reason for not being reserved in a space, I'm probably going to stay reserved in a space. Why do you need to hear me talk? That's how I be feeling. Why do you need to hear me talk? Like, why? Why? Why do you deserve to hear me talk? That's another question. Plenty of niggas don't deserve to hear me talk, don't deserve to witness my thought processes, and seem hella confused when the expectation of my thoughts is disrupted. Not even on no funny shit. I do believe it's genuine questions to ask, why do you deserve to hear me? Right? Why do you want to? Even if all I got to say is, I want some Cheetos, and it don't have to be no intellectual ass thought, you know? But like, why do you want to hear me? Who are you to experience me in the first place? Especially if we are sharing a space physically, but most definitely not emotionally, because we don't know each other like that, or because the dynamics are weird or off, the energy ain't right, or, you know, for some other reason, it just don't seem like we're meant to interact very deeply. Like, why? Why force it, you know? Leave my ass alone sometimes. And, you know, you ain't got to make it awkward either, you know? Like, and also another thing that I consider is, like, what kind of space am I in? Is it primarily full of non-black people? Why do you need to hear me talk? And for what, you know? People don't realize that, you know, talking to others can be a lot of energy. It can be a lot of labor that goes into that. And I don't have time for that shit. I don't have time, especially not for free. I have a lot of stuff to do. And even if I didn't, even if I wanted to go home and watch Grey's Anatomy and watch Shonda Rhimes keep trying to make it seem like Meredith and DeLuca dating and fucking is actually cute, even if I just want to go home and watch that shit and talk shit about Owen, that's fine. You know, what if I want to save my energy to do that shit? I got every right. I got every right to calculate exactly how you want to spend your time and energy, who you want to talk to, why and when, and even, you know, if you want to talk to yourself when you get home, talk to your spirits later, you got every right. You truly do. Silence is something so precious and I'm constantly advocating for it because it should be respected so much more. You know, for me also, silence is how I catch messages. And that's not the same for everybody, but I need silence so I can hear, you know? Like, how are you going to be able to hear when you're constantly hearing all these other people talk, you know? How are you going to be able to hear these messages from, you know, your inner self, your higher self? How are you going to be able to hear your spirits? Like, anything, anybody. I need to be able to tune out or opt out and it not be a big deal. Silence is a grounding experience. And I affirm that for myself, and I affirm that for any of y'all who are in need of those affirmations too. So with that being said, we are coming to a close, but here are the suggested prompts for you to work with or think about. What do your interactions with silence often look like? Does it normally benefit you? Does it normally make you uncomfortable? And do you know why? And are you usually good at communicating when you need silence? And if not, what do you think needs to happen in order for you to get good at communicating when you need silence? Let me know. Or nah, you know, you ain't got to tell me shit, to be honest. Um, but that's your homework in the water. So besides that, I hope y'all have a good rest of your week. I hope that... If you touch a white person today, that you specifically do it with your left hand out of rudeness. I hope that you get some money from them today. I hope that you manage to scam your way into their bank account however you see fit. May you receive all the abundance that you're seeking. And may whiteness and every fake nation forever fall and never return. And in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Ashe. Assalamu alaikum, y'all. If you're interested in energy healing work, specifically Reiki, that serves as not only a service that can be done long distance or in person that helps to restore better health and balance to all of your physical, emotional, and spiritual bodies, but also being able to connect with your spirits, whether you intentionally work with them or not, and get messages from them too, go to my website and book me there. 
tarot divination if you're interested in that i primarily do four different styles for my clients go to my website or if you might be interested in my building with the ancestors one-on-one guide for black people only any articles i've written or inviting me to speak at more conferences or to do any of my workshops you already know what to do go visit my website which is taylorAmariLittle.com. taylor um amari is a-m-a-r-i little like the word dot com you can follow me also on my instagram at controversial tay if you need help spelling controversial look it up um at miss tay amari on twitter and you could pay me or go tell your white friends too as you should um my venmo cash app and paypal are all on my website you cannot miss it my name is taylor amari little thank you for listening and have a black ass day y'all